Well, good morning all. What a wonderful morning here in the off-grid cabin. What a wonderful early morning. It's actually 4.30 in the morning. My body clock got me out of bed early. But that's fine because we've got a lot to get through over the next couple of days. So what we're going to do in this video is we need to upgrade the 24 volt system, put a bigger solar controller on it and another solar panel because I've been having a little bit of problems with that system. Now the system's the King system, we're using all King's gear except for the inverter. So we're going to keep using the King's gear and I'll show you what we're going to be putting in. Now another thing that I've done too is an upgrade to the cabling in the territory for running and charging the DC to DC charger or the battery box which has the DC to DC in it. I originally had six mil cable. I've upgraded that to the uh, heavier cable. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. So I've put, I've already put that in, put that in the other day. We'll have a look at that in the video as well. But what we do need to, just put that down there, do need to do is we need to, I'm not sure if you can see that, put in the uh, King's 40 amp MPPT controller. In fact, tell you a little bit of a secret. It's actually the EP Ever controller with the King's logo on it. And that's good because the EP Ever is not a bad controller. So that needs to go in. And now we also need to test the solar panels out because they're getting pretty old. So I finally took delivery of a solar panel tester. I'm really keen to give this a try and see how well that's worked. Maybe I'm that keen. My body got me out of bed early in the morning and say, get into it, Glenn. My subscribers want to see these videos. So let's go out to the power shed and have a look what the issues were. Well, the issues are, yeah, get that right. I need my cup of joe. It's too early in the morning. Oh yeah, got to make another one. Let's go to the 24 volt system. Let's have a look at the issue that I've been having with it. Well, have a look outside. It's still dark outside. The sun should be coming up just over there very, very shortly. And I want it to come up quick because I want to get that solar analyzer and test it and see how we go. So coming into the power shed, what we've got is we've been using the King's uh, 20 amp charge controller. And that's a great little charge controller. Nothing wrong with it. Like I said, it's an EP Ever brand charge controller with King's logo on it. The problem is I don't have enough panels to do what I want to do with the quality or the the age of the panels I've got. And this is limited to, I think, about 46 volts input from the panels. So I can't really go higher. I want to go higher in the panel voltage, so I need to put a bigger controller in it. And that's where our 40 amp controller that goes up to, I think, 96 volts input, that's going to do the job. And then that's going to charge our King's batteries up. I guess we can't put the controller on until we take it out of the box. And I know some of you like unboxing. I'm not an unboxing fan or unboxing video fan, but anyway, we're going to do it just for you unboxing loving people. So this is what we've got in our pack. I'm not going to go through all of this too much. These we don't need to use, but they're going to definitely come in handy uh, for projects later on down the track. Uh, what is that? Oh, a little temperature sensor. Okay, we're going to put that on. That's handy. Right, so let's get this out. I can do this with one hand. Here we go. Right there like that. Excuse me for a second. Okay, there we go. Very simple to put on. Now, how big are our terminals? Are the terminals... Yeah, they're really big. We're definitely going to be able to get our cables in without a problem there. Right, let's get this in. A few moments later. Okay, with the magic of editing, we've got the controller fitted now. Probably doesn't look much difference in the shop, but here's the other controller. We're going to put them side by side and to give you a bit of an indication of the difference in the size between the 20 amp and the 40 amp. So it is, oops, it is definitely bigger. And we do need to take our sticker off and put our 24 volt sticker. Maybe I might have to make a new one because this one's not gonna come off. I'm gonna put our 24 volt sticker on here like this. So when we're using and showing the system, 
here on my channel, you can distinguish the 24 volt system from the 48 volt system. Okay, so what I've got to do now is I've got to set the interface for this to set it up for 24 volt lithium ion phosphate batteries. And then this unit in here goes inside. So coming to the remote screen here, so what I need to do is I need to change this to lithium eight. We'll have a look at those settings in the moment. So these are the different settings that you actually have through the uh, controller here. So normally I would do user, but for this system, I'm just gonna use it as default, which is what most people do, sealed lead acid batteries. We definitely don't have that. We don't have gel. We don't have flooded and we've got lithium. So lithium four is 12 volt. Lithium eight is uh, 200, uh, sorry, um, 24 volt. So now we need to change our amp hour rating. So I guess I hit, righto, so I finally got it set. I had to go through some other menus, but I'm not gonna show you how to set these because they are a bit of a uh, challenge. But just to show you on the manual here, these are the default charge parameters for LFP8, so that's what it's set as default. And of course, user, we can change them. I might do that at a later date. Okay, what we need to do now is we need to come over here to this uh, power state, little power wall, little test wall here. The Victron control, I'm going to take that. I'm going to use that on another project. We're going to put that little uh, 28 Kings controller with a new interface right here so let's get into it a few moments later righty ho we have the victron controller out and the king's controller in on our little test board here so i want to step you through how this setup works just in case you might decide to do something similar in your design so the way i have this set up to charge up my batteries is I have an input line coming from the solar panel outside. So there's 400 watts of panels. They're the King's panels we're testing. And that line comes into here to an Anderson plug. And that can go into whatever charge controller I want to put into. into. So it can go into here like this to charge up this battery box. Or what we can do, if I can get this to work, we put that in there. Like we're not, I'm not going to actually hook it up because generally I like to hook up my... Uh, batteries first so I'm just going to sit that there for a moment now the output line you can see here that comes to here which I've labeled power and that goes into our batteries so we're going to put this into this battery box here like this and that is going to feed the power into the controller we can see everything is lining up so we've got our voltage of 13.3 volts We've got nothing coming in from the solar. Well, the sun is starting to come up, so let's, let's plug this in. And we're going to see if we're actually getting any power coming in from our panels. There we go. So we've got 21 volts coming in from our panels and 0 0.2 of an amp coming in as well. But the sun is only just coming up. You know what? Let's go outside and let's check out the sun. Yeah, I know. It's a pretty long video, this video, but... I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who are going to like it. Some people love the long video. So if you've enjoyed the video so far, give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Watch the video to the end before you make a comment. So that's what we're running the power into the King's controller from those two panels. But the sun, we can kind of see it's uh, in behind those trees. So it's not up yet. So once it's up, then we can do some testing. Now, I do want to show you what I want to do with the 24 volt system because we need to look at that and get that sorted. So I'm gonna, gonna go for a little wander up here and I'll try not to trip over everything. And we're gonna have a look at these panels here. So these panels here, they're in the shade because the sun hasn't come up yet. They're 190 watt panels. I bought these panels brand new back either 2008 or 2010, maybe 2010. So these are at least 15 years old. And I'm questioning their output. So that's what we're gonna test with our panel tester once our sun comes up. But what I do need to do is add an extra panel to this, up the line voltage, 
to see if we can get our 24 volt system charging a lot better. So while we're waiting for the sun to come over the trees, we'll have a look at the upgrade I did to the cabling on the Territory. And yeah, I've got my cup of joe with me. So the cabling that I put on was the 50 amp wiring kit for the DC to DC. Now it is the King's product, but I'm looking at this cable. It is heavy, it is thick, and it is copper cable. So I'm quite happy with the quality of the cable they've put in here. The only thing I'm not keen on is the maxi blade fuses. I'm not a keen on those ones. I'd rather use a MIDI. We'll see how that goes. So the cable that I originally had that I put in was, well, let me pick this up. It was this one here, because that's all the cable that I stock here and rolls here in the off-grid cabin. So this is six mil. And look at the difference in the size. And it's not full of insulation. There's a lot of cable inside in here, a lot of copper. So that 6 mil cable actually ran the 25 amp DC to DC charger. But even with that, this is way too thin. So it definitely needed to be upgraded. So yes, I upgraded it to the 50 amp cable, which then allows me to put in the bigger DC to DC charger. So on the back here, I've now got the iTech World battery box in here with the 40 amp DC to DC charger. And this is gonna give me the ability to charge the battery up a lot quicker than with the 25 amp charger. So when I'm out with the caravan on a day where I run out of power, this is certainly going to make things quicker charging up the batteries. Right, I'm gonna finish my cup of joe and then we're going to when the sun comes up do some testing on some of the panels with that little panel analyzer and see what we're getting out of our 24 volt panels for the 24 volt system six and a half hours later okay so i have now the four panels on the ground wired up in series parallel so they're in series they're in series, and then those two are paralleled together. However, look what's arrived. That's right, the clouds. And what else I've decided to do is move the remote head for the 24-volt system, put it with the 12-volt system's remote head, and it kind of fits in really nicely here. So let's have a look what we're putting in now. We've got no sun, of course, because we're doing a solar video, so... Our line voltage coming in is 72 volts. We've got one amp coming in from the panels. And our MPPT2 is going up to 2.6 amps at 26.4 volts. So we can see our controller is working just nicely. Now I know you're keen to see this solar panel analyzer working and testing our panels, but without sun, well, I really can't test the panel output. Well, I can, but I just can't get an accurate reading of what the panel can produce as its maximum output in the sun. But I know you want to see this little device I've got, so I've hooked it up to this panel here. It's just facing into the clouds. We're getting diffused lights. So no matter where I put it, it's going to read the same. Let's have a look to see what's on the screen on this little analyzer. So I have one of my 190 watt solar panels just leaning up against the post here facing, well, the clouds. And I've got it plugged into the panel analyzer. So let's have a look at what this analyzer does. So let's do the backlight so we get a bit of a backlight screen. So we can see it gives us our maximum power in watts, our volts, maximum power point in volts, maximum power point in amperage and then our open circuit voltage so at the moment the panel's given around about 41 volts open circuit so let's do a manual test so i'll hit that one there so you can see it's testing test complete so with the lack of sun we're getting 9.18 watts out of the panel our maximum power point for the voltage is 36.73 
and our maximum amperage is 0.25 of an amp. But that's not bad considering, well, we've got no sun. So that's really no help to us. I would have really liked to have given you a good test using that tester in this video. But what we're going to have to do is wait for this cloud to go away. It's supposed to be partly cloudy today. I can see a lot of clouds. I don't know about the partly part. But maybe this afternoon the sun will come out. And when that happens, I'll do another video. And we'll look at this tester in more detail. Maybe do a review on it. Give it a run through its paces with some different panels see how it goes so look out for that video that'll be coming up on the channel next so if you like this video leave a comment below give me a thumbs up and wait for the next awesome video that'll be coming out on the off-grid channel